Guys, welcome to the United Stand. It's the 10 o'clock wrap-up show at 11 o'clock because of the extra time and penalties in the football with myself, Jordan Valleys, and Beth. How are you doing? I'm extremely good now that I know that football is coming home. <laughs> it's, we, we will definitely be coming on to that a little bit later. Definitely be touching on that. But I'm telling you, show... Jordan, it's coming home. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Oh, God. You haven't even won it yet. You're already giving it. Right. Jam-packed show. We're going to be going through the Romano interview that Mark did earlier because they covered loads of stuff. United Base will be going through that. But also, the main thing we're going to be discussing is the headline of the show. Fee agreed. Coming out of Sky Germany. 85 million euro fee agreed for Sancho. It's literally now down to the formalities of agreeing when they're going to release uh, the announcement, etc. So we're down to the nitty gritty now, guys. Finally, finally, the end is in sight. How are you feeling, Beth? I'm good. Honestly, I just can't wait to wrap wrap this whole thing up. I just want to see Sancho holding the shirt now. We can get ready, get into the team. I think we've all known for a while that it's going to happen at some point. And now the fact it's actually happening, like it's been dragged out massively. It should have been done so much earlier, but at least it's getting done now. And then we can actually move on to hopefully getting some other signings in. I mean, Manchester United usually don't do business this early. Usually it's like deadline day stuff. So it actually does make a little bit of a change, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. And if it is, just seems like everything's falling into place to make that announcement just as we drop the new shirt, boost those sales, keep the Glazers happy so they get their dividends, which we all hate. And the fan base buy, buys the shirt and the question of the number, which we discussed before, uh, will soon be out in the open. So I want to move on to uh, Fabrizio Romano's interview with Mark earlier today. I know he does appear on, on a lot of shows, but I definitely feel like he opens up that little bit more to Mark. Mark just seems to just squeeze just a little bit more out of him. Really good interview today. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it yourself, Beth. No, yeah, I, I, wa I watched it just before. You know what? Um, in the middle of the Croatia game and the France game, I kind of watched it in between that when I was doing stuff. Yeah. And it, it was it was a really good interview, and I think Fabrizio actually answered a lot a lot of things like really well, as much as he really can yeah. do. And we kind of got. A little bit more information than what we knew before like the Camavinga talk was really good to focus on I mean what it, the fact that it depends on kind of Pogba and Van der Beek is I know we've heard that before but to even know that still now is kind of a, a little bit worrying to me because yeah. them he isn't coming in for them positions he's coming in for a different position in my eyes anyway so to kind yeah. of have it resting on that is a little bit worrying but the fact that we're looking to get Sancho done and after the Euros get straight in for a centre-back is is really good news and it's stuff that you want to hear because usually with Manchester United it is all to kind of towards August oh we've not had time to do this oh they yeah. were only getting these players and it's kind of last minute things the fact yeah. that we kind of do know now like it is going to be Sancho centre-back mm. then they're going to look what? at the right-back situation and then they might consider like a centre midfielder after they've seen what everyone's doing the fact we kind of know the priorities and the structure is really good as a United fan to look at over the summer because you can kind of picture what team's going to be going into next season because personally for me I don't I, I think it would be amazing if we could get Camavinga done along with Sancho and a centre-half I personally don't yeah. see it happening just because the amount of competency comp I can't even say the word, but you know, I mean, to do that type of business, it would yeah. have to be a very, very good transfer window, which Manchester United aren't usually kind of good at. So if it does happen, it'll be like, wow, like I'm so happy this has happened, but I'm not setting myself up for it to happen, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the biggest things that Romano said in the interview was about Pogba. So I want to mm. touch on that. We've just seen him score an absolute worldie of a goal. He had a class for, performance for tonight. He did. He played well. But one of the big things he said was that he was focused, that Pogba was focusing on the Euros uh, and didn't want to talk or think about his future. And once the Euros was over, he would then decide what he was doing. Uh, currently, there are no negotiations with any other club, which is which is a big, big point. The Euros is now over for France, Beth. So Pogba's future will be decided, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. So we're not going to wait as long. And that was the one good thing, I think, from a Man United point of view, about France going out is that we can get some kind of closure, hopefully, on the Pogba situation. How do you see that sort of playing out? I think things are going to start to get a little bit clearer now over the next few weeks and hopefully we can, we can speak to Fabrizio again because this is kind of when the news is going to be coming in, isn't it, about um, Pogba now because the 
uh, tournament's over, he's going to be getting into contact with his agent. He's going to want to know his plan for next summer. He's no longer focused on the Euros because France are out. And I'm, I am happy France are out. But, oh, my God, if we could have that Paul Pogba playing for Manchester United week in, week out, he's a different player when he plays for France. And this tournament has been absolutely world-class. So, I personally hope that Manchester United can keep hold of him. And I think we will keep hold of him because I don't think anyone is going to come in with an offer that we're looking for. I mean, I know he's yeah. had a great tournament, but people just don't have the money. And he's not in, if he's not in people's transfer plans by now, I doubt that that is going to happen. So I do think we'll have Pogba for another season. Whether it is yeah. to run down his contract, that could possibly happen. I don't really see him. If he does, we'll, we'll figure out what he wants to do anyway. Because if he yeah. can't get a move and he does definitely want to leave, he is going to run down his contract. It's what anyone who wants to leave would do. It's what Donnarumma yeah. did at AC Milan. Like, it is going to happen. But... Yeah. If he does want to stay with us and he does want to commit to the club after we're kind of going in for maybe Varane, Sancho, and we are going to try and step it up a level and he wants to be part of that and he does sign the contract, I think United should give him give him what he wants in, with an extent. I think he's worth that. I think he's the most talented player that we've got. He needs to show up a little bit more in, in our team, 100%. He needs to yeah. kind of keep that consistency level because people compare him and Bruno all the time. The reality is we need both of them in our midfield. They're both great players. And Paul Pogba is one of the most talented midfielders in the world. There is absolutely no denying that. If he can produce that week in, week out, I mean, his penalty, like he's just got such good technical ability. And to have that into yeah. your team, people would describe him usually as like a luxury player. I actually don't see him as a luxury player anymore because I do think this season he's, he's done the work. He's Got put the graft in and I think he's really developed into a good Premier League midfielder and I think he can only step it up another level especially after watching for France now so if you think David De Gea is on 375k a week if you think about it in that sense Paul Pogba should be getting that money if he's been here for this amount of time he's that talented and you want him a part of your plans for the next steps you're going to offer him that contract and I think it is right to do so yeah let me just get a couple of these super chats Beth because they're absolutely flying in uh let me just see because I just missed one and I want to get it. Uh, ben Hoop says, uh, so Varane isn't playing. United need to get on him. Yeah, again, that's another situation that can be sorted out. The Varane situation. Now France out the Euros. Uran, uh, Varane, Pogba. We can all start looking at these things now. The, the safety net of them being wrapped up in the Euros is gone now. We can now get down to the nitty gritty and that's sorting out these Manchester United players. And also, from, from Man United point of view, Pogba getting an extra couple of weeks rest. Again, I think that's another exactly. good thing. Exactly. He was playing every minute of that tournament. Yeah, over 5,000 people watching at the moment, guys. That's amazing numbers for this time of night. So we thank you for that. Make sure we're hitting the like, subscribe and share. Keep those super chats coming in. We'll try and get through also, as many of them as possible. Comment if you would offer... What what would you, what contract would you offer Pogba? Would you give him that four hundred and fifty thousand pound a week that people are talking about? Is he worth that to you? Put that in the comments as well because I want to see if people actually are starting to think he's worth that amount of money now. Yeah, yeah, great point, Beth. Andrew Lee says all we need is Brazilian Fred, Swedish Lindelof, and French Pogba. Great addition to the United stands, Jordan. Thank you very much, Andrew. And that is a great point, Beth. Something I want to ask you: Why is it that these players are going away? To their, to their national teams and just seem to be playing with a little, apart from Bruno, with a little bit more freedom um, and, and just raising their game to another level. I've noticed that, that these United players that seem to be under massive pressure playing for Man United and their performances are crit criticised, they're going and, and absolutely having worldies for, the, for their country. I think tournament football is a lot different and I think playing for your country is different. We've got um, the other side of things when you look at England for us. Usually England can't. That We've all got such talented players and usually can never get over the line. But do you know what I think it is? You do have to start to realise with with tournament football and when you're playing for these countries once every so often, you kind of do turn up for the occasion. When you're playing for your club, it is continuous. So you get to see the player a lot more than what you do for the country. But at the same time, there is a question to be asked because it happens time and time again now, especially, especially with Paul Pogba. He plays yeah. so much better for France. It just, it just is a fact. For France, he's consistently one of their best players and a world-class mid, world class midfielder. And honestly, what I think it's down to, it's the same with Fred at Brazil as well. I think it's down to who the playing, uh, who's playing around them. The best players bring out the best in other players. So Pogba being able to ping balls to Mbappe. I mean, I know Mbappe didn't have the best performance tonight, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Having Kante, yeah. the best CDM in the world next year, 
it's going to make a difference. Fred playing next to Casemiro and having Neymar up front, it's going to make a difference. So I do think the yeah. best players bring out the best in each other. And that's mm -hmm. a massive point that we've seen at Manchester United as well. Yeah, yeah. Paul Pogba Super needs answer. He needs someone like that. Super, I'll come on to that point because you made a really good point there, Beth. Uh, super chat from Zane. It's gone 11 o'clock. He's clearly been on the source. We are swapping Bellerin plus cash to get Lukaku with him, Laka, Abba, Saka, Pepe, even Sanjo will make you a better attack. Zane, Stay off the boots, mate. Can I just say one thing to Zane? You're selling Jacka, right, to Roma, apparently, I've heard. And it's looking like it's one of your best yeah. players. So I think you should be worrying about that, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Beth, what you're saying is, is that we've got the foundations of a really good side, but we just mm. need to get the right signings to complement the players that we have got, if that makes sense, yeah? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I do think Bruno really works in our team because we do complement him at the moment. There's other players that need to be complemented. Fred mm. would play a lot, a lot better next to someone like a Casemiro, who he's playing with yeah. in the Brazil side. I mean, Pogba, we know what he needs. Even Gary Neville was saying today, he can't really play in that two-man midfield unless he's got a top, top, top class CDM next to him. So that's kind of what he needs. In, or, or even, as well, a solid centre-half partnership affects that. So that's kind of what we're looking at as well. Uh, down, We've got um, on the right wing, for example, I feel like wan doesn't do as, do as well as maybe he could do because he's not got a natural right winger there helping him out. There's all okay. sorts of things that need to complement different things. And until that Manchester United team is where we need it to be at, not all the players are going to be playing to kind of the maximum, if, if, you, if you get what I mean with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me ask you a question, uh, and I'm going to ask the guys in, in in the comments as well. What percentage is it that is needed? That is that is to do with the coaching. That's the reason why these players are not playing to their best of level. And what percentage is it that it's just the right partnerships are not there with the side? So almost, what percentage is it the board's fault for not giving Ollie the right players, or what percentage does Ollie need to take responsibility for? I still, sorry, I still think I'm talking a lot here, but I still think that the coaches do need to take some responsibility. Like, for me, with mm. Fred, the fact he's allowed to kind of run around as much as he does and come out of position and take shots. If if Ollie as a manager should say, Fred, like, there is a place for you in this team, but you've got to stay yeah. in this this half, tackle people, get the ball, stay, on, stay in this area of the pitch, pass it on. You don't pass the ball out. Pass it to Pogba, yeah. he passes the ball out. Don't be taking shots. You're not there to take shots. No, no, like, giving thumbs up and smiling on the sideline when Fred's taking a shot. You can't shoot. Players need to be disciplined in their roles, and that's another fact that I think kind of is down to the coaching. Pogba's given a lot more freedom at France. That's down to the coaching. Yeah. Like, so yeah, there is yeah. part of it where the coaching do, do come down to it. Do, do you know what? Right. Uh, let me just do this super chat quickly. PJ Almedia? Me yeah, okay. Hi, Beth and Jordan. Next to go will be England. Then we can see our transfer situation clear up massively. Pogba, Varane, Sancho, Kamavinga, let's go. Um, Mark won't be happy to hear you say that. Um, Beth thinks it's coming home, so we'll, we'll leave it there. But yeah, the more that these teams are going out, the better it is for Man United. Players are getting rest and the excuse of waiting for the Euros to be over, we can start wrapping up these, these transfers. Your point on Fred is, is massive. The other week when we did a show and I made a joke about about taking his number, which was clearly a joke, but people, people took it way too serious. Um, <laughs> I, saw, I, saw, I saw people taking that a bit serious. Oh, I got hammered. I got hammered. I but it's okay. agree with you, to be fair, on that one, Jordan, but you did get hammered. A, rightly so. Rightly so. Rightly so. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> I, got tagged, I got tagged in videos of Pogba, uh, sorry, of Fred playing for Brazil. And I watched a couple of the highlights and he was just so much more disciplined for Brazil. He wasn't running around booting people, you know, lashing passes out of play. He was just so much more disciplined and he almost just sat and did the exact job that we want him to do for United. Um, so yeah, a percentage of it is down, down, down to the coaching, but I do feel it's still 70-30 in favour of the board and the board haven't really followed through. You know, they, 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 they're giving you the ingredients, but they're not actually allowing you to make the cake. That, so they, they, they're giving us Pogba, but they're not giving us the CDM to bring the best out of Pogba. But on the flip side of it, to crowbar Pogba in, Pogba's being played on the on the left rather than in his best position, which you've now seen for France. If the board are watching the Euros, surely they now go out and go, right, we need to pay Paul Pogba the money, get him signed up, 
but also give him the right partner then to, to bring out the best in him. But unfortunately, you know how incompetent our board are and they're just not going to do it. And that's what is worrying for Ollie. Do you know, do you know what? I, I'm going to make a statement here that I, I actually am going to make a statement. I think at the moment, Fred isn't good enough to be a, to be a, the CDM for us next to Pogba because he's way out of position too much and he's not disciplined enough. But mm. I actually think with good coaching... I think he he has the attributes to be a very good CDM, and I do think he would have a place in our team as that as that CDM next to Pogba if he was extremely disciplined and coached extremely well. And that is something I have fought a little bit for a long time. And he'll do stuff, and I think, oh God, not, like now he couldn't do that. And at the moment, he's not at that level. But I do think yeah. with the right coaching, he does have the attributes. I know a lot of people agree with me on that, but. I think he could play there, possibly. But at the moment, if it stays like it is, you are going to have to look for, for that CDM. Yeah. Guys, nearly 6,000 people watching at this time of night. Absolutely brilliant. Hit the like, subscribe. Let's get it over 6,000. Another super chat here coming in from John Quinto. International football is slower as well. Pogba has more time on the ball for France. I do agree with that. It's definitely not as high-paced as the Premier League. He does have time to look up, think, and make the, make the right pass. But the brilliance to be able to stop that ball dead and pick that top corner. Two keepers were in the safe that today, but that was an absolute worldy strike. It was ridiculous. Like that strike, I watched it. I was like, oh, God, I wish I could have this. It, 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 you know, I mean, I know that does happen, but the strike was just, it was just, it was, it was typical. It was so good. And I watched that and I thought, oh God, they're going to go on now to do it. And I mean, how everything yeah. can change. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good good point in the comments. I've just seen, I just don't want to miss it. Red Red Javi says, top CDM sense danger. And Fred doesn't really sense the danger. Um, so interesting point that. Does he does he have the, the fundamentals to go on to be a world-class CDM? I, I don't think he does. I think he, he has a a role within the squad, but to be a world-class CDM, I just, I don't think so. But that's one Beth we're going to have to agree to disagree on. I don't, I'm not saying world-class CDM. To be fair, actually, you know, I, I do I, I agree to disagree with you. I do think he has the attributes, if he was coached properly, to play in that pivot with Pogba. Yeah, okay. Cool. And and it, to be a world-class pivot, if the coaching was there. It's an if. Okay. Right, let's move on to another point uh, in that interview today. Kamavinga, um, not advancing or imminent. He's got a year left on his contract. Uh, pretty much in the same position as Paul Pogba. There seems to be a lot of players in that position now where they just sort of sat there one year left on their contract, lots of rumours about where they're going to go. Are they going to sign on? Are they going to move? We seem to be linked with all of them, but mm -hmm. it doesn't look like anything is going to be happening at the moment and he's going to see what his options are at the end of that contract, at the end of the contract. Uh, it's definitely a player that I would love us to sign. I think he's an absolute baller. It's one of those things, as soon as you get a link with him, you start looking at more and more videos. I've seen one or two things from him in the past. I signed him on Football Manager. He was unbelievable on Football Manager. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a good enough um, thing for me to sign him, to be honest. But definitely seems to be a trend at the moment, Beth, that players are happily running their, running down their contracts and just seeing what options are out there. I think the reason that is happening is because of COVID. So not many people have the money to go out and get players that you did usually be able to go out and buy. So players are thinking, wait, if I sign this contract, even if a club does want me, I'm not going to get that move because they're not going to have the money to do that. So I'm going to be stuck here. I think there is going to be a lot of people that are stuck in their contracts. And I think that's why clubs are doing it. I mean, players are doing it. I mean, players have more control of the clubs now. And, and that that is just part of football. It That's how it has evolved. I think Do Donnarumma is a big part. Donnarumma, Donnarumma, he's a big part of that. Like yeah. the way that he ran his contract down to get that move, because let's be honest, he's a top class goalkeeper. If he signed that contract, no one's going to have the money to go in and spend that on a goalkeeper right now. So I think it just yeah. shows that players are kind of getting more aware of the market and they're doing stuff to get the moves that they want. And obviously it doesn't, the transfer fee doesn't, kind of affect them it's more about the wages that they can get and they still get them wages if they go on go on the free so i think that's kind of why it's happening now yeah yeah definitely zane's back for more just can't get enough of this channel can he believe his <laughs> own team haven't got their own channel Varane's just a mini fridge attack arsenal attack will run run rings around him so go ahead and buy Varane. listen che 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 cheers Honestly, trying to tell me you're trying to tell me Arsenal go for Ben White, right? You'd rather have Ben White than Varane. Just please <laughs> stop. Just stop. So it'll, you, be make, just... it'll make me laugh when they have Ben White and Gabrielle at the back next <laughs> season and they're still shit. 
you, you've just spent a hundred sacks of sand to tell us that comment, mate. Like, please lay off the sauce. That's all I'm going to say. We shouldn't do these late night shows because for people like Zay, it really isn't good. So I wake up in the morning, check his bank statement and think, damn it, I've just bought Goldbridge a new pair of shoes. Um, <laughs> The good thing about the current thing is at least we're getting linked to these kind of players now. At least they, there's 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 rumors out there, and we're starting to get linked with these kind of players because that's what we want. But my concern is Beth, is that one of the things we said is that there's a lot of clubs interested in. I'm not confident that our club dealing with our transfers, even if Oli sits down and meets him, can get that deal over the line. We know what happened with Bellingham, and that's what's disappointing. When the Bruno deal happened, we were the only team in for him. With Sancho, we seem to be the only team that's really following through and going for him. So I think we'll get it done. Whenever we seem to have competition and it's teams linked, you know, in and around us, so your, your Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, or your PSG, Real Madrid, even your Barcelona's, we never seem to get the deal done, Beth. That's a massive concern for me. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a massive concern. I mean, I think it's very well known now that our board is like the clown of... The clowns of transfers like everyone knows you can run rings around them everyone knows like who you deal with people don't want to deal with us because it's known in the football world how bad we are at dealing with transfers and you know what if it's like with man united if there if it, there isn't a one horse race and if the player isn't 100 percent wanting to come if they don't seem to be able to do the deal like it's crazy like i honestly would love to just sit down and watch them do business because i mean i'm no i'm no um wolf of wall street like I, i'm no accountant or anything but i genuinely think like how could you actually be messing it up that badly i mean yeah. to be fair with the sancho deal they have they have saved a bit of money but is it worth it for one season is it really really worth it in the grand scheme of things so then yeah. probably it is but it's like money and the problem is is a top club with ambition will we'll just go out and get the players that they want the way chelsea do it the way city can do it city they're like yeah 100 million plus sterling for kane Mm -hmm. any, any right. replies on that we we just can't do that and it, and it is annoying but if we if we end up getting Varan, Kamavinga and Sancho then there'll be no complaints from me do business however you like <laughs> right. let me just get through a couple more super chats they're absolutely flying in for this time of night absolutely brilliant guys I want to get us up to over 6,000 people watching so everybody hit like share subscribe Zane's back for more another 100 sacks of sand forget Pogba Saka has been the player of the tournament um, who did I say? Yeah, Zane's back. So <laughs> what I would say about Saka is that he actually has been a really, really good player this this tour of England. He's way too good for Arsenal. Way too good. They're not even the, the fourth best team in London anymore. Um, he's had a, an outstanding tournament, but we're not here to discuss Arsenal. He definitely hasn't been better than Pogba. And you've seen when you get the right players next to Pogba, how he can uh, how he can deliver. What, I want to know how Zane's making this money. I mean, Zane, <laughs> come on. If, if at least send a super chat telling me. At least tell me how I can make this money because honestly, I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, Gabrielle Noel says, Zane telling us that he'd rather the English David Luiz over Varane to save five million. That Heady must be on tap tonight. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's on the source. I want to, I want to move on um, to David De Gea. So David De Gea was mentioned that it's all very quiet around the David, David De Gea at the moment. Uh, it could be really difficult to find him a new club this summer. So it doesn't look like anything's going to be done. Next year is more likely to be done. So he's a year further into his contract. So that will bring his value down a little bit. And also, obviously, clubs will recover um, economically. Financially. Uh, yeah, post-COVID. I personally don't want to lose De Gea. I think, I think keepers grow into their prime as they get older. I still feel like De Gea's best years are ahead of him. And I know we're in an unfortunate situation where we've got two really good goalkeepers. But for me, if there was, if we had to sacrifice one, if we can't keep both happy at this moment in time, I wouldn't be sac sacrificing David De Gea. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. And, and over to you, Beth. What, where do you see that with the two goalkeepers? I, I'm, I'd go with Henderson. I get hate for this every single time. Um, but for me... I think Ollie's made it clear the way he kind of give Henderson that chance at the end of the season. And I think for me, I just you've got to take risks in football sometimes. And I think that is a risk that that could that could end up paying off. I think David De Gea is a great goalkeeper and I think he's been so, so good for us over the years. And I think his performance in the Europa League was good towards the end of the season. Am I already getting hate? I can't even see right now. But um <laughs> I just like Henderson's, Henderson's attributes more. And that's just my personal preference. I think his okay. attributes 
could go on to be a world class goalkeeper. He's not yet. He's not yet. Mm. No, but he's got good attributes. I've heard. I watched the uh, Mark Ben Foster interview on here. I mean, this is not why I'm making my decision, but I'm just kind of bringing things to like bring it into perspective and Ben Foster was saying Henderson kind of looks like he's going through that time that he went through at United where you're overthinking everything because it's Manchester United it's a net step up and if he can get through that period he said he's watched him train he's a top he's top class he is got yeah. talent I watched him at Sheffield United last year and I'm not saying that's a be all and end all but he was pulling off saves that I just thought they are top saves and I just prefer his attributes. David De Gea's attributes are a little bit different. I think David De Gea doesn't come out as much as I'd like. I don't think he's great on the ball. And for me, Henderson's just a little bit more of a leader at the back and kind of a little bit more vocal. And that's what I would want in my goalkeeper. Do I still think David De Gea is a good goalkeeper? Yes. If David De Gea started in goal for us next season, would I be bothered? No. But if I had to pick personally, if I was a manager, I would start with Henderson. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to come back on that point. Um, let me just do this super chat before the time's out. 450k per, per week is obscene for a footballer. Did you see the Oxford professor who designed the COVID vaccine talking about someone deserving 450k a week? Well, I'm not going to get into that. We obviously know that footballers, you know, and their, their, their wage brackets are completely different. I do personally agree 400, 450k, 375k a week for Taheya. It, it is obscene. It's crazy it stuff, also just, it's just the world of it football. Just, it is the world of football, but it sets a really bad example. As soon mm. as you start moving into that bracket, you're then going to have three or four players knocking on the manager's door, looking for that kind of money. And then you have players that are coming to us for the wrong reason. They're coming to us just for financial reasons. And in order for us to get back to where we belong, we need players that believe in the badge and understand the history of our club and want to put us back to the top for the right reasons and not signing purely on a monetary thing, i.e. Sanchez. Yeah. A um, cu couple more super chats. Um Oh, no, I think we've I think we've we've actually done those right. The the last the last I left this one to last because I think we're going to be discussing this one for a little bit longer. Um, Varane Varane has has not one hundred percent decided on his future yet. Madrid want to keep him and will speak to him after the Euros, uh, but his current desire is to try something something new. This one worries me because I feel like and Mark mentioned it earlier. I do feel like this could be Ramos two point If Ramos is leaving. Real Madrid are not going to want to lose two, two world-class pillars of their defence in the same summer. I really feel like we could be getting played off. It's a really easy one to flirt with Man United, get Man United names name dropped here and there, and then suddenly Real Madrid roll over and have their bellies tickled and suddenly offer him a massive new contract. He is a defender that I want, but I really don't see this one happening, unfortunately, Beth. It's one of them again. I didn't see it happening, but the more it goes on, the more I'm like, yes, let's get Varane. Especially after t after today, I thought his his performance today, like I just thought he was great again. Like he's exactly what we need. He's won things. He's a leader. He's a he's a great great centre half. And I agree with you. Real Madrid are not going to want to lose them. But Fabrizio did say in his interview, and Fabrizio is usually quite spot on that at the moment Varane is saying he wants a new challenge. He's won everything with Real Madrid. He wants something different. And yes, he might just be saying that to kind of get Real Madrid to cough up. But if you have won everything with a club, maybe he does want something different. Maybe he does want to do something in the, Prem in, in the Premier League, which let's be honest, guys, it is the best league in the world. Like maybe he does kind of want that next step in his career. We've seen people do it before. And if that is what he wants to do, do it. Like Manchester United should be there. They should be in now. Realistically, you should be dealing with Sancho and Varane at the same time. They should be in now. As soon as this Euros is over and trying to get Varane on side and trying to get kind of that deal done, they need to get Varane to pick United. I mean, the price shouldn't be a problem because last year in his contract, max, it's going to be 60 million, I think. Mm. And I think 60 million for Varane is 100% worth it. If Harry Maguire is worth, worth 80 million and they're the same age, then Varane is definitely worth all the 60 that you're getting with the leadership, the experience. I just think it is a deal that Manchester United cannot afford to miss out on. If there's any chance at all, like 10% chance, United have got to be there. It's a position that we desperately need. And for me at the moment, out of everyone who's available, he's Mm. definitely top 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 of the list yeah guys, guys in the kind of, what what did you think of his performance tonight because at parts i thought he was a little bit shaky but overall i just i do feel like he's he is a class yeah i think overall i think he is he is a, a, a classy defender but there were points tonight when i did think oh i'm not i'm not so sure but no i i 
I would definitely take him at United. He's definitely better than Lindelof. And I think the, 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 the thing that we need to remember is that we're looking for the right partner to bring out the best in Harry. Do you feel he's the right defender to bring the best out in, in Harry Maguire? Yeah, let's just put it this way. I watched Pau Torres tonight and I watched Varane tonight and there was a very clear difference of who was the better defender. And I'm not going, I'm not hating on Pau Torres, but yeah. these are the options we've got at the end of the day. It's the options we've got. And would I rather go with Varane or Pau Torres? I'd rather go with Varane every day of the week. The performances were much different today and I'm not saying you can mm. judge it all down to one performance. One's won, like basically everything. The other's not yet done that. Want the worth around the same price at the moment? Like it's it's just a clear, obvious thing for me. And Varan today, I do think he is the right person to partner Maguire. He's got leadership, he's got experience. Maguire plays on the left uh, with United, and I think he does a good job of it. Varan play on the right, and mm. I think he's very good as well with the ball at his feet, as which is a good thing to compliment Maguire as well. I just think it will work, and I think it'll work a lot more than Pau Torres. It's like why would yeah. you bring someone in who isn't a massive improvement on what you've already got? Bring someone yeah, in who is the improvement, and Varane is that on Lindelof. Yeah, the one thing uh, Fabrizio said today was Paul Torres' release cause is actually 65 million euros, That's not 50 crazy. million euros. And I'm sorry, but yeah, the player I've seen tonight, he ain't, he ain't worth 65 million euros. Um, so yeah, that money would be better off spent elsewhere. And I'm sure if we were really genuinely considering playing that for Torres, if we went with that sum of money to Real Madrid with him in the last year of his contract, we could get that Varane deal done. So, yeah, I really do hope we could uh, we can make a move on that and, and get him on board. One more super chat for me to just get on board. Oh, go on, Beth. Do you want to read that name? Go on. Oh, my God. Don't make me do this. Go on, Beth. It's all I you. I'd anger Ralka. <laughs> I mean, I'm so sorry if that was offensive, but I think I, I, think I pronounced <laughs> it right. Skeptical of Varane has played under shadow of Ramos. Trophies sometimes count for nothing because we all agree PK is not good, but trophies countless. Leadership again not clear as Ramos was leader. I've got, I'm sorry, I've got to disagree with that comment. I think if trophies sometimes count for nothing, I don't think trophies count for nothing. I, you don't win trophies unless you're a good player. Let's let's just put it that way. You don't start for France and Real Madrid unless you're a good player. Like it, it just it is what it is. And leadership. Yeah. How can you say that Ramos just solely leads that team? You can't win things without being without having leaders in that team and do you know what even if Ramos was a leader in that team he's been playing alongside him you learn from mm. that so I do have to disagree with that in a way yeah what what I would say on that is uh he said call me roll so okay roll Rolling. thank you for the soup roll thank you for the, that's my Welshness I apologize thank <laughs> you for this thank you for the super chat what I would say about playing next to Ramos Ramos can make Phil Jones look like prime Rio Ferdinand He's just such a classy defender and a leader, and you'd be scared to make a mistake next to him in case he bit your head off. So he would definitely have made Bran be better, but hopefully has brought his game on. I do feel like him and Harry would absolutely complement each other, though. I do feel like they would be a great centre-back centre -back pairing. And let's be honest, like there's not many other great centre-backs that are being linked to. I think that price for Torres is, is absolutely astronomical. 65 million euros, not not a chance that I'd be paying that. The thing is with Harry and Varane as well, they're both now quite experienced and they're quite calm defenders. I, I, like like you said, I do think they would um, complement each other a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just before we, we start to wrap this show up, I want to go back to the, the, the headline of the show, the fear, greed, Sancho, everyone's favourite subject to not talk about. Uh, but it does feel like the, the finishing line is is in sight. The fee seems to be in agreed. That's coming out of Sky Germany, however reliable that you know that is. Um, the, the here we go is, is is very soon. It's incoming. I'm really glad that this deal is going to get wrapped up. Hopefully, from a from a United point of view, England get bombed out tomorrow. That ain't going to be popular in in the in the comments. But <laughs> it be. It means the deal can get done sooner, the announcement can get done, and we can move on to transfer target two, three, and four, Beth. I mean, as much as I want Sancho to be done, I'd much rather wait for England to bring it home first. Like, let's just let's just get that straight. And to be, I don't understand why I would have to, to actually. They want to sell the shirts and they want to like do the big announcement. I do, I do get that point of it. But Jordan, let me tell you something. Tomorrow we're against Germany, aren't we? We're winning that game. We're winning that game. <laughs> And then, lovely little run to the final where we're going to be playing, not France, and that's and that's all that matters. So, 
Just wait, just wait till then. When when is the final <laughs> if the if the if the Euro is actually? Uh, I, I don't I know when it is. Like the 11th of July, be 11th of July, something like that. So I reckon Sancho is going to be announced about 12th, 12th, 13th of July, something like that. Do you know what, Beth? I, I, I really, really like you, so I'm not going to banter you about England. I'm literally going to save it all for Mark. I'm sorry, because... but where, where's Wales in this tournament, Jordan? <laughs> The, the, the same place England are going to be tomorrow, home. But I'm not going to banter. I'm, I'm not going to banter you because I'm going to save it all for that toxic Goldbridge after he called me out today. So I'm not going to do that. But from a United point of view, if England were to go out tomorrow, it just speeds everything up. Um, we're not waiting another two weeks to get that deal done and move on. You know what our board's like? They literally can do one deal at a time. Sancho's the deal they want to get done. If we wait another two weeks, it's just two weeks longer into the summer and closer to the end of the transfer window. So, yeah, from a United point of view, I really hope we get that wrapped up. Guys, still over 5,000 yeah, people. Go on. I was going to say, they can get um, they can get Verandum while Sancho's busy winning the Euros. Now that France are out. <laughs> we can, well, sorry, I missed that. I said they can get... Um, I said United can now get Verandum. Now he's knocked out while Sancho's busy winning the Euros. <laughs> yeah, listen... I, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Sign Pogba's contract. Get Varane. Let's get it done. And then Sancho. What a transfer window that would be. Uh, another super chat just quickly from Gerard Tomi. People question Varane's leadership, but the same people forget he won the World Cup partner in uh, Samuel Amati. That's yeah. the... That's yeah. the that's, lead, that's leadership right there. Yeah, definitely. And, and these are the things that you pick up from playing... Uh, alongside Ramos, the, this is this is what you do. That's what I'm saying. Ra playing next to Ramos is always going to bring your game on. So definitely, I 100% agree. Guys, it's 20 to 12 at night. We're not going to keep you guys any longer. Thank you very much for joining myself and Beth on the United Stand. Catch you guys tomorrow. And unfortunately, it's not coming home, guys. I think it might be. Jordan's going to be laughing at this tomorrow when we go out, when we go out, when we go through to the next round. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care, guys.